Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today I'm gonna make a pair of athletic pants for my oldest son. It's been a while since I've sewn um, bottoms. So that's what we're gonna do today and I hope you'll join me. So just go ahead and um, grab your cup of coffee or um, take a moment and share this while I go ahead and get things organized here on my end. Um, we, I'm going to be re-publishing um, this pattern and tutorial on Friday. It's an oldie, but a goodie. No, it's an old um, tutorial. And if you click the link in the description of this video, you will see my very tiny two boys that are now huge. Um, so you will definitely see what I'm talking about when I say they are small. Um, so I'm going to actually in the next couple days be um, redoing the photos, but I did want to let you know that I've already updated the product, so the actual download, to be the updated pattern file. Okay, so I have not updated the photos. It is the old tutorial and the old photos, new ones coming Friday. However, the um, it's still the same with or the, um, uh, I can't even say it, the, um, the pattern file, the, the PDF, this that you print, that is updated to the new one. It includes an extra size, has a new um, size chart on it, um, goes up now to size 12, which is actually gonna fit my 13 year old because he's tall and thin, and um, gives you all that good detail. So. If you have the old version and you'd like the new version, you can go ahead and grab that. Um, it's a good one. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. So you don't have to wait until Friday to get the new pattern. That's already updated for you. And um, if you need new photos, it's not really gonna be anything different. It's just going to be some newly updated ones with my kids being bigger. Uh, mostly the sort of posed photos will be different and not too much probably different in the actual written tutorial. Although I might include like how to put in pockets or something like that. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And let me see how this happened last time I was trying to do this and I couldn't figure out the pages. Um, anyway, so that's what we're doing. Did you guys check out yesterday when I was sewing on the brother Facebook page and um, I made a cute little pencil pouch. That was fun with Angela Wolf. That was yesterday. I haven't um, been on the brother page for a while. I've been, as you guys know, taking some time off live shows for the summer. And now I'm back at it. Kids are in school and I'm excited to be here with you guys. So I'm almost ready to go. Just doing a couple of shares here and then we are going to get started. And sewing some athletic pants. So I just did realize I forgot to cut pockets and I did, my oldest will really love it if I do put pockets on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out for you. Go Arnell, you saw that one. Yeah, it turned out really, really fun. I could probably grab it. I don't think anyone has taken it um, to school yet. It's probably right over here. So here was the pencil pouch I sewed on yesterday's live show. It's wax canvas and mesh vinyl, and it turned out super awesome. So that was a really fun project. And again, you can um, find that if you scroll down my page or if you um, hop over to the Brother Sews blog, you will also um, find all the details there. Okay, so we're gonna cut some pockets now because I forgot to do that. 
and I do want to add pockets to this. So I'm going to see if I can cut all four layers of the pocket pieces at one time. So let me turn this down. Yes, the binder part is my favorite. And actually, I don't know about where your kids go to school, but for mine, usually at least two of the three of them have binder pouches, like a three ring pouch as one of the actual listed um, supplies that they need. So it's handy to have that. All right, so I'm just sort of winging this pocket. Got to make sure it's big enough to put your hand in. And I'm cutting four pieces here. I'll show you my general shape. And um, I do have like a pre-pocket template. I don't know if it's linked in this in this mesh pants post. It's definitely if you search pocket. You can find it other places on my site. I'll make sure when I do the newly updated one that we link to a pocket template. But you can totally make one. So here's kind of the general pocket shape that I like to make. Um, I like to put sort of a tab here along the straight edge. Yeah, let's see, see here? Okay, so I like to make the tab along the straight edge. You wanna make sure that it's big enough for your hand to fit into. And my son is almost 13, so his hand is very similar to mine. So we'll do that. And then I just kind of generally have it go going kind of straight down, making a loop, coming up and around and meeting at that tap. So this would be the pot, sort of pot, general pocket shape that I would make if I were just winging it like I just did. And let's talk about what else we need to make these athletic pants. So I'm going to show you today the lined version. And then I'll also sew an unlined version um, that I will show off as well in the pictures. So I've cut the unlined version of this dark navy athletic fabric. And then I'm making this lined version out of blue mesh. You can see that it is, it's too see-through to use on its own. Okay, so we're lining it with the same blue lining fabric that I just um, cut the pockets out of. So you wanna make sure the lining fabric is, um, has at least some stretch. This, all of the fabric needed for these pants does need some stretch, but you could definitely make this out of sweatshirt fleece, uh, mesh, athletic fabric, stretch woven, you know, so many options for different fabrics that you could use for this. Um, I'm kind of sticking with the mesh because the pattern is named mesh pants. So I want to at least have one mesh option to show you. My favorite sports mesh is actually a closed hole mesh so that you don't have to line it. This open hole, you act, you, you know, you have to line because otherwise you can see right through it. So, um, I've had some in the past that is the closed hole and that's probably my favorite um, athletic mesh to sew with, but not, I did not have enough to cut a pair of pants out of it. So not what we're using today. All right. So we are over here and we're going to be using the serger for much of today's tutorial. Let's see here if I can tip it down a tiny bit. Okay. Maybe that's too far. Okay, so we're gonna be sewing on the serger to put a lot of this together. And like I said, this is um, a lined version. So I have two fronts and two backs of each piece cut already. So we are going to begin by sewing the curved front and back seam uh, four times. So we'll make two of the lining and two of the one front, one back. Like all of my free patterns, this one has the 3 8 inch seam allowance included. So you can definitely just go ahead and cut it out and sew it. No need to add a seam allowance or mess with anything like that. Okay, and I did make sure that I put dark thread in the needles so when you open it up, you're not seeing white, although I do still have one light colored 
thread on here. And the mesh, even though it is an open weave, I just go ahead and sew it like normal. And if you don't have a serger, of course, you can sew this on your sewing machine. You would just wanna make sure that you would use a knit stitch. I prefer a narrow zigzag over a built-in knit stitch that might be on your machine. So often your machine might have like a lightning bolt looking stitch that in the direction, in the manual is called the knit stitch. I don't love that for really stretchy fabric. I feel like it is um, just not stretchy enough. So um, you want it with the see-through fabric, you do want to make sure your thread is somewhat coordinating or at least similar color. So dark or dark, light or light, um, just because it will show through a little bit. But we are going to put these two pants together. Again, we're making a lined version. Um, and you could make these fully reversible if you wanted, but this blue fabric that I'm, this lining fabric, isn't really fabric that you would necessarily want to have exposed. It's kind of like lining. So we're, we're, we're not gonna make it reversible. We're just using it to line the blue mesh so that you can't see through. Okay, but I have made, um, a fully reversible, where is the other part of this? Um, fully reversible version before. The other thing I want to mention is, so I said that I'm sewing the size 12 for my son and in ready to wear clothes, he's wearing, 12s are really too small for him and too short for him. He can fit into the width of the size 12, but things are starting to look pretty short if I sew 12s or buy 12s for him. So he is wearing size 14, 16 in most store-bought clothes because you know it goes from 12 to 14, 16, which to me seems like a crazy big leap, but that's the way ready to wear clothes are. So I did do a couple of things on this pattern. I added about three inches to the bottom of the leg because he's quite tall. And I also added one inch to the top, and I'll mention this in my written tutorial, but. I added one inch to the top around the waistband because as you get taller, you also get longer, not only in your legs, but also from your crotch to your top. So I don't want that to be like really tight on him, even though the width is gonna be totally fine. Um, we also need to add some, some length at the top and at the bottom. So I went ahead and added length to the legs, but I also did add an inch around where we're gonna sew the elastic to make sure that he has room um, to fit there as well. Okay, so now that we've sewed all those four curved um, front and back seams, we're gonna go ahead and sew the side seams of the pants. So make sure you have the right sides together. Okay, so you can see this is the right side, this is the right side of the front and back, and you're gonna mash up the, match up the two front, or the two outers and the two Inners. So our mesh is the outer layer. So we're going to go ahead and sew the mesh outer layer. And if you want to add decorative stitching, like top stitching or anything like that, you would go ahead and do that as you sewed each seam. So sew the front curve seam then I would top stitch it with either a double needle on my regular sewing machine, or um, you could use a cover stitch. So I have my cover stitch threaded with navy blue, do I have navy blue, oh I have black on there, ready to go. I'm not sure if I'm, I don't think I'm gonna top stitch the individual seams on these pants, but we will need to hem them and, um, So the elastic waistband. Now here's what happens when I lengthen the end of the pant and don't really measure it against each other. So you can see my bottoms are uneven and I will have to um, even that up. Apparently I lengthened either the front or the back way more than the other side. But I'm sewing from the top down on these side seams, which will make sure that at least the top is lined up and then I can 
um, adapt my silly cutting later. Again, I cut it longer than the pattern, so the actual pattern is not off by an inch. I was just adding length because I measured my son before he went to school. His skin seam this morning, and it was about three inches longer than this pattern was, but he is a little bit big for this size, but again, his waist fits in the, in the measurements. So with a few adaptations, I should be able to make pants that fit him well. My other son, who is almost 11, fits perfect in the size 10. His waist measurements and his inseam length were absolutely a perfect fit. So I just cut out the regular size 10 with no adaption, no adaptations for him. And we will sew that up and hopefully that will fit him as well. So we'll have to wait and see how that works for him. Okay, so now I've sewn the side seams. Okay, for our pants. And now it's time to sew the inseam. You know, each of these parts goes together really, really, really well. So um, I see that Arnell, you just asked about girls. This can totally work for girls. They're just simple, straight leg athletic pants. Last fall, I shared more of a slim fit version and I actually sewed a pair for my daughter. So I have my oldest and my youngest modeling those slim fit athletic pants. These are the straight leg version. So no real tapering on the leg. And um, it just is kind of a wide leg, straight leg athletic pant version. So it can definitely be used for both boys and girls. You might have to lower the rise a little bit. I know my daughter is like super particular about things not being high. Everything needs to be way below her belly button. She doesn't want anything touching her belly. So that would be the only thing. Sometimes girls and boys are a little bit different proportions, especially as they get older um, with their hips and waist. So I would just take some measurements or compare it to a pair of pants that you already have that fit well. And then you could go ahead and check if you need to make some small adjustments to the height of the rise in the front and the back. But otherwise, yes, these are great for anybody. And again, you could make these in French terry. You could make these in um, sweatshirt fleece. I feel like I need to make a pair like this lounge pants for myself. Out of I have this lovely sweater knit. And I just feel like sweater pants feel like they'd be so comfortable. So I might need to try that out for myself. Um, but so you, oh, you know what I did? I forgot the pocket. No one reminded me to stick the pocket in the side seams. And of course, this is the outer layer, so the pocket needs to be sewn to this layer. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and unpick a little bit of that side seam so I can put in my pockets. Someone was supposed to remind me, you cut pockets, but no one did. Or someone did and I didn't see because I can't watch all the comments 100%. So now if we didn't want pockets, these would be ready to fit with the other, totally see their see-through, but fun. Um, these would be ready to fit with the lining, but we do want pockets. So let me grab my seam ripper and I'm going to go ahead and just rip down um, the top several inches of the side seam. Let's see here. So we need... Where did my pockets go? We need to be able to fold over the elastic casing, okay? And then I need a pocket. So let's, let's not rip out more than we have to, um, but let's 
take a look at this. So uh, ripping out seam on mesh is even more complicated than rip, ripping out seam a seam on normal fabric because you know, with the mesh having holes in it, sometimes it's harder than ever to see where your stitches are. So I'm gonna try, if I can't do this, I'm absolutely not opposed to just cutting this seam and then adding the pocket in, but we'll see if I can get it started here. Once you get it started, you should be able to pull and seam rip your serger seam just like your regular seams by doing a few stitches at a time and then continuing to kind of pull down on it. So I did get it started. So I'll save this quarter inch of width by not cutting it off. And we're gonna go down to where I ripped the little bit down here to get it started. And then we'll do the other side so we can put in our pockets. So I feel like when my boys were younger, pockets weren't so important, but as they've gotten older, they are definitely looking for pants with pockets. Um, and I do think this pattern with the straight legs would be lovely with French terry. But again, for these today, I did want to stick. I even had some sweatshirt fleece out and I wasn't sure if I should use that in today's tutorial, but I thought I would stick with sort of more the athletic pant look rather than the sweatpants. Um, just due to the name of this pattern. Okay, we're getting there, a couple more inches. Um, in addition to these mesh pants, I have other sort of athletic slash sweatpant patterns for kids. You can find the classic sweatpants pattern, which includes either a cuff on the bottom or elastic. So kind of your closed ankle sweatshirt. And that's a definitely a great unisex pattern. And I should probably update that one too because the kids in the pictures are tiny and no one's wearing the larger sizes. So it's always nice to be able to see a greater range of sizes used in the pictures. And then, like I said last fall, I released a more slim fit jogger pattern, which is similar to this one, except for the legs are tapered. And so you could put, still put cuffs on the bottom um, or just hem but it's definitely more of a tapered leg version, okay? So you can check that out. Did I go past where I wanted to go? I think I'm where I wanna be. Okay, so let's just double check. We wanna be able to fold over the waistband and we wanna put the packets in. All right, so that was good. And then let me measure to rip out the same amount on the other side. Maybe I'll just put a clip because sometimes I can't always see where I started that. Okay, so now we're gonna rip out the other side. You guys are so patient watching me um, seam rip this, but you do let me know if you have any questions, but this would also be a great time for you to check out the tutorial so you can click through and find, again, the tutorial that you will see in the pictures is my original mesh pants pattern and tutorial. So pictures of the tiny boys, they were like preschool and kindergarten when I took those photos and, um, but the downloadable pattern pieces, I have already updated, just a slightly updated pattern. So I've just added a little bit of fullness. I've just tweaked a couple places um, with the fit. Of course, I've learned a lot in the, about pattern fitting in the past several years. So I just tweaked and made some general improvements to the pattern, as well as adding one size larger, now that my kids are bigger, um, so you can find that new downloadable pattern by clicking the link. So the pictures will look the same as always, but again, the downloadable PDF has already been updated. And then you can come back Friday 
like in two days and I'm hoping to have updated pictures of my boys wearing these pants that I'm sewing today as well as just a couple tweaks to the tutorial. Um, nothing major, but that is what um, I'll be posting on Friday. So if you're looking to sew for back to school, I've been posting several tutorials for pencil case cases and pouches and other fun back to school sewing related items. Um, I have not sewn my kids many back to school clothes at all because they're still kind of wearing their clothes from the spring. So, and it's still really, really hot here. So it was not, I did not feel inspired to like get winter clothes or anything organized for them. But once the weather does start cooling off, then I'll be sewing more um, fall clothes for my daughter and my son. So this is kind of the first um, fall piece here with the mesh pants, but they will be a good piece to add um, to their wardrobe. Even not necessarily for school, but just for the weekends and having warmer pants. Okay, so now I have gotten back to my clip. So what we're going to do now is um, take this, and I should have just done this before I even sewed the side seam together. So you have to put up with a little bit more fabric in the way. But you can see... This is sliding. You can see that we're just going to line up right sides together, the pocket and the pants, okay? I don't wanna go all the way down to where I ripped out because I wanna make sure that we can um, close that hem back up. But I'm just gonna clip this in here. And then on the other side as well, again, if your pocket fabric has a right side and a wrong side, you do wanna make sure that you have right sides together on both the side of the pocket and the pocket fabric, okay? So now we will have this pocket that will close the side seam and the pocket pieces will meet here and then we'll tuck it inside. So right now we're looking at the right side and we'll go ahead and tuck it in. And you can stitch this right on with a serger or if you again want to use your zigzag or um, other knit stitch, that's fine too. But we're just attaching the pocket to the side seam, okay? Pocket and side seam, and I should have, again, should have done this before the pants were sewn together on the side. Okay, so that is one pocket, and now we'll do the same thing on the other side with the other pocket. And you notice I'm not sewing the pocket together. This is an inseam pocket. And so we end up assembling the pocket pouch after we sew it into the side seam. Unlike when we're doing sort of an angled um, front pocket, you know, with a front pocket, it's generally, um, you might sew the pouch before you attach the pocket. So this is a side seam pocket. And again, you could add this into pants that you already have sewn because you just saw how I just ripped open the side seam and now I'm attaching this into the side seam. Um, ideally, of course, do that before you sew the side seam at all, but you can add it later as I'm attempting to show. And now what I do like to do is um, fold that seam allowance over 
to the main side and top stitch. So you can again do this with your cover stitch. You can do it with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, which I think is what I'm gonna do. And yeah, I'm trying to think where do I want the seam allowance? Towards the pocket or towards the, oops, wrong presser foot. This will just help the pocket to lay nicer inside the side seam of the pants is if you give it a little top stitch. So I am top stitching the seam allowance towards the pocket and I'm just using a basic zigzag to be able to do that real quick. And this will, again, just yeah, help everything to lay nicer when we do um, sew that side seam back up, which was, is the next step. You might be able to get away with a longer straight stitch here or a double needle top stitch. Um, but do make sure whatever you use still has a bit of stretch so that if your child, like mine, is shoving their hands in and out of the pocket and you know is pulling on the fabric at all, that you'll have your stitches will have some give. Okay, so we are top stitching four individual sides of this pocket. This is the last one right here. And then we will be, oh, my needle came unthreaded we'll be able to um, sew that side seam back up and continue sewing the rest of the pants. I probably should have put blue thread on here to really make it matching, but I'm not, the gray is fine. I'm not really worried about the gray that the stitching is going to be inside the pocket for the most part and um, easy to hide. Okay, so now we're going to stitch the side seam again and the pocket. I'm going to sew it on my serger even though I won't be able to catch all of the angles on the serger. Wait a second. Yes. Um, Mary, so it is, it is hit or miss on the things my son will let me sew for him. Um, definitely sweatpants and things like this that he'll just wear more on the weekends. His clothes that he's wearing to school don't really have too many mom-made items in them, but every once in a while, a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, he'll still wear. Uh, but I do end up taking some of these things and just taking the pictures in them and then we do give them away because he doesn't love them. So everything you see him wearing in pictures does not necessarily mean he really loved it. It might have been where he endured the photo and then he didn't really wear it. But we, will, we do give it away to people who can use it. And I know there are people who want to still be able to sew for their kids. So, okay, so there's our pocket in the inseam. And I'm going to go just reinforce the top and the bottom after I've sewed the side seam with a straight, with my zigzag over here on my sewing machine. Simply because the serger can't securely make all of these um, right angle corners. Right, you can do curves pretty well on the serger, but I definitely want to reinforce the angles. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, the pockets will help improve the wearability of these pants, and I'm so glad I did take the time to go back and fix that after I made the mistake. It would have been easier to not, especially with you guys all watching, but if I want any sort of hope of my son actually wearing these, putting pockets in is a must. All right, so I'm just using my um, zigzag stitch to reinforce the top and the bottom of the pocket where I made sort of sharp angles with the serger because you don't always catch um, all the layers. So I just wanna make sure that those, especially the top and bottom of the pocket, which are areas that get a lot of wear and tear, I wanna make sure that they are reinforced with extra and strong stitching. And um, I know that's just a weakness of mine when I'm sewing with my serger, trying to get everything there to line up. So now we can take a look and see how this will look from the front of the pants. Okay, so, oh, got a thread sticking out. Here's the side seam of the pants and you can see there's the pocket right in there. Okay, so that will look cute. So you can you see the pockets? Can't really see in there, okay? But again, there's the side seam pocket. Put your hand in there, it's big enough, my whole hand can go in and it lays, here's the side seam and it lays really nicely along there, okay? So that's the outer fabric. Let's finish the lining. We don't have to worry about pockets in the lining. We're just putting pockets in the outer part. So now we can take our lining and sew up the side seams. Right sides together front and back pieces. And again, if you want these to be fully reversible, just make sure that both of the fabrics are ones that you would wanna see. And then I guess, especially for little kids, you get one side dirty, you can just turn it inside out and wear the other side. I think my kids are a little bit beyond reversible clothes, so I'm not paying attention or worrying about making this fully reversible. If you did make it fully reversible, of course the pockets would be on the lining and not on the outside. So you would only have pockets on the one side unless you added another set of pockets to this piece. So that's something to consider if you are gonna make it reversible is you'd only have pockets one way. my boys fleece jackets years ago and I used an actual pattern not even like something I made up in my head and for some reason one of the jackets ended up with pockets only on the inside lining so you had to like unzip the coat and get into the uh, lining to put your stuff in your pocket so needless to say that was not a favorite the other one had pockets on the outside and the one kid had pockets only on the inside, so they were not impressed with that, <laughs> that sewing job. And apparently, I don't know when I realized it, but I didn't go back and rip it out and move the pockets to the outside. I finished the whole thing and then realized, oh no, the pockets are on the inside. That's the only way to get to them. legs aren't quite lining up either so my probably should have measured more exact on my lengthening but we'll make sure we even them up here in a minute all right and then you will see because my legs aren't quite even when I go to sew the inseam I'm making sure that I match that center seam and then go down the leg because I don't trust 
just starting at the leg opening and sewing up. I'm afraid that um, my leg sewing will be all wonky. So you can see this is definitely not even, again, because I lengthened it. And so I'm just sewing it uneven to make sure that the middle of the pants meets evenly. That's definitely more important and I can take care of the other side with adjusting my hem. And then once we finish this, uh, Judy, what did you ask? I see you said serger. Oh, um, this serger is a brother simplicity. And I have loved it. I've had it for maybe four years now. It's a great one. Haven't had any issues with it. I do have my machines serviced somewhat regularly. I only have one serger. I have multiple sewing machines, so I feel like I can um, be without that longer, but I'm hesitant to ever to get my serger service because then I'm without it and I only have the one. So um, I get it serviced every, maybe every two years. I probably should do more like every year because I use it a ton and I know it gets filled with stuff. But. I try to open it up and suck out the lint every once in a while. But anyway, I do feel like if you take care of machine, your machine, it should run better for you. All right, so we are now ready to see what these look like when put together. So um, actually, I'm gonna leave this one inside out because we're going to put the wrong sides of the fabric together so that on the outside and the inside we see the right side and no seams, right, for the lining. So here is, let's see, find the back and the front, okay. Here is the mesh part, and I'm just gonna put a clip on that back seam in case I get mixed up, and then we're going to take these and find the back, which is right here. And then I'm going to stick them together. So I'm gonna run my hand down this leg. And then I can go ahead and stick it down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, pockets are hard. I feel like we've all, we all have pocket stories sometimes. Um, did I just put this in backwards? No. Okay, so we'll clip the back here together. And again, your seams um, should be touching each other inside and then the nice part of the fabric or the nice part of the um, stitching should be um, seam. So here's on the outside the good seam. Here's on the inside the good seam, right? We don't see any raw edges. They're all enclosed in here and I'm going and matching up the four seams so that I can sort of shake this down. Okay, so there is our pants. They look huge. <laughs> Smart pockets, yeah. Okay, and so you can see there's the side seam pocket, and these are looking really good. Now, I, like I said, I lengthened the top of um, I lengthened the top of the this um, pattern because if you're lengthening the bottom and if your son is tall and thin like mine and he can fit in the size 12 even though he technically probably should should be a larger size you also need to lengthen that the top part of the shorts because that part also continues to grow on a child so you can't just keep making the pants longer and longer on the legs you also have to add lengths other places so i did add about an inch around the top of the pants but here's the tricky part I forgot to add it when I was cutting the lining. So here's what I'm going to do right now. 
I'm going to put the lining about an inch down from my pants, on top of my pants, and then I'm going to fold this over to put the elastic casing and clip it. This will also help reduce some of the bulk in our uh, in our, the elastic casing, but we'll still hide the elastic because the lining part um, will be fully covered on this side. And when I sew the seam, then it will be fully um, enclosed and won't really matter that the lining is lower. So if I had, I was think I thought about the adding the top length after I had already cut the lining. So in order to save these pants, I'm just, I just went ahead and kept cutting it and this is how I'm saving it. So you can either have your lining and your outside exactly the same height or this will reduce some bulk. My lining is actually cut a little bit smaller, lower and it will still be sewn into the casing. So I, you can see here, I'm just folding over. I have one inch elastic, so I'm making sure that the casing is wide enough to fit that elastic. If you were wondering about, am I just randomly folding over fabric or do I have something in mind while I'm doing it? Again, creating a casing for one inch elastic. So you can see that I'm doing folding it over first on those seams and then kind of easing it in between. Okay, so now we should have a one inch casing all the way around the top. And again, I've made it harder by making my lining a little bit shorter than my um, lining shorter than my outside, but it's still fits fine and I can see in here that the lining is all good. You don't want the lining to be lower or you'll have like a bunchy crotch area and that's not good. So if anything, you do want the lining to be slightly shorter um, just so it all lays nicely here together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sew um, this elastic casing with my cover stitch. And let's see, I'll start at the back. Now, while I'm sewing this, I do need to make sure that I leave a opening to thread the elastic into, right? Um, and I am going to stitch on the inside. So on the top, you'll see my looper. And on the inside, you'll see my three needle threads. So this would be called a reverse cover stitch and I'll show you what that looks like when I finish. And you could do it either way. I'm just, I already have it pinned and marked, sewn on the inside, um, to sew it on the inside. So I'm just gonna continue with that, but, okay. And now I feel I'm coming to the pocket. So I do wanna make sure I don't sew that pocket top down or get it stuck in what I'm sewing. And I can feel that sort of um, fabric the thicker fabric when I got close to that side seam. So just be aware when you get around the pockets, depending on how close they are to, um, whoop, whoop, how close they are to this elastic waistband. Okay. And then I also see, Goodness, these clips don't slide. I have to make sure I take them out. They don't get stuck in the presser foot, but they do get a little bit stuck in some of the other pieces of this machine. Okay, so there's the other pocket. I'm carefully sewing across the top of it. And now we're coming around to the back and I just need to make sure that I do leave an opening to thread the elastic. Go ahead and pull my fabric out of the way, chain off a little bit, and cut that. So, because I did the reverse cover stitch, you see we have a waistband here, okay? 
And I do not want the pocket actually sewn into the waistband because the kind of pocket that I cut, if you saw at the beginning, wasn't straight across the top. It actually sloped right down and around. Um, so that's not the type of pocket that you would sew into the waistband. But again, I cut the, I just winged the pocket and this is the sort, of, the sort of pocket that I cut for my kids' clothes. If you have a style of pocket that you like more, you can definitely go ahead and cut that and then include that in your waistband if that works for you. Okay, so there, that looks nice on the stitching and we will go over and um, close that opening after we thread the elastic. So I'm putting the elastic here. Oh, and I was gonna show you what, show you what the inside looks like. So it's sewed down that um, raw edge nicely and then here's the outside. You could also sew it on the outside and then this looper would be on the inside and these needles would be on the outside. So definitely up to you how you want to do that. So as I'm threading this elastic, um, the this inside is just that single layer of mesh, but the outside has that layer of um, lining. So you can't see the elastic through on the outside, but I can see a little bit on the inside as I'm threading this. And I did use, uh, I'm just using one inch elastic. If you like a wider waistband, you could whoop, lengthen the top of your pants so you had a little bit more to sew over. So what type of machine did you use to sew cover stitch? So it's called a cover stitch machine. And if you look at your t-shirts or any mostly knit fabric, items that you would buy in the store. All of the hems of your t-shirts and things are done on this sort of machine. And it binds the raw edges and then puts a looper on the back. So it's a super stretchy stitch, which is why I love it. You don't get popped seams. And you can use it for both top stitching decoratively or hemming or like I just did here, sewing that casing on. So it's a great machine, but it is definitely, of all the machines I have, the most optional because you can replicate a lot of what it does on your other sewing machines between these two. Um, so, but if you are an established sewer and sew a lot of knitwear or kids clothes, and you um, are looking for another machine, the, I cannot say enough about the cover stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to overlap my elastic and zigzag it closed to form a circle. Okay, and then we'll pull that inside the casing of our pants. All right, so we've got some nice looking top of your athletic pants and there's the back and you can see the gap that I left. And because you can't back stitch on a cover stitch, I will now need to make sure this bobbin. Um, I will now need to make sure that I overlap my stitches. Oops, I sewed on this side. Okay, so what we will do is we'll put this in here and I'm going to sew over about an inch of what I already sewed and then I'll sew over another inch of what I've already sewed on the other side and that will help to secure um, these stitches in place. So a cover stitch is a little bit harder to, wait a second, which, to um, close this hole but I really did like the look of it on the outside. Okay, so I'm going over what I've already sewed to make sure um, that we have secured it so that it will stay. And then after, again, chain off, cut, and you should be able to pull 
your stitches through to the back side. Or I don't know which what's it doing here, but we're gonna tie off the stitches. So things, things stay where we want them to. And then we just have to hem these pants. So I have to shake this down to see if the lining and the um, outer line up on the hem. And remember we have to even those up because we saw that there was a few uneven, the bottom of these pants are not all even. So let's check that out and then we'll hem the pants. And if you don't have a cover stitch, you can obviously hem on your sewing machine. I, if I'm doing a lot of hemming, I love to use um, a twin needle with my sewing machine because it gives the look of, um, of this, of the, uh, bleh. oh, so there we go. You can't even hardly see that I filled in that hole. A twin needle also gives the look of the cover stitch, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, so there's the back. Looks fabulous. There's the side seam. So we also want to make sure that this um, elastic doesn't twist in the casing because we all know that that can happen. So I like to sew up and down on the side seam. I like to sew up and down on the back and then leave it. So now I have to see what is, where's the back? That's the back, okay? So I'm just reinforcing that elastic position. Of course, the second to last thing I'm sewing, my bobbin is running out. Can I sew one more seam? It's like bobbin roulette, right? And I feel like sometimes it gives me the warning when there's hardly any bobbin left. And then sometimes it tells me the bobbin is low and I can keep sewing for like a couple more feet. So anyway, I probably also should have put a tag on here. Maybe I'll still add that so that my son can more easily see what is the back and what is the front. All right, so now we've sort of shaken the pant legs down and we are going to line up the hem in here. Okay, so I'm first gonna cut the mesh layer to even it up. Because we had that one side that was quite a bit longer. And then it also does look like maybe my lining side is not quite as long. So you can see here, the mesh looks like it's cut a little bit longer. So we'll just fold that over and then it will all be enclosed when we um, sew it. So I'm folding up about a one inch hem, okay? With a, and putting a few clips. Let's see if I can clip the other one as well. So again, I need to trim this uneven bottom. I don't know if it's the front or the back, but I was about one inch off on one of the sides. Okay, and sort of shake down and adjust the lining in there. There's nothing worse than a bunchy lining, am I right? So make sure that you have Try to shake down and straighten out the lining as much as you can before you sew that so that everything lays smoothly when these pants are actually being worn. Okay, so now there's that hem and we can Again, so like I just did, maybe I'll bring you this over closer so you can get a close up view of what the cover stitch does. Um, I think so that it matches the waistband. I'm going to sew on the inside, just like I did 
for the elastic casing. So we'll actually have the looper on the outside rather than the looper on the inside. For, you know, shirt hems or things like that, I almost always do it where the looper's on the inside, but this is kind of a fun change and adds a little bit of a decorative look to the outside of our pants. So making sure that I'm catching, this has three needles, making sure that I'm catching at least one to two of the needles on, that looks so nice though, on my folded over edge here. And then one needle, at least one needle is off and that just finishes the edge the raw edge of this mesh really nicely. So before I get back to where I started, I wanna trim up those threads. And then like I said before, to, to finish that, because you can't back stitch, you wanna make sure you sew over a couple inches of the stitching where you started. And then I like to pull this out a little bit and that just gives me a little bit more room to get the fabric out of the way before I chain it. And then you can go ahead and tie off these threads just to add some extra reinforcement that your seam isn't going anywhere. I don't really have um, problems with my cover stitch unless it's like skipped stitches. And then I can see on the looper part that it's skipped stitches because you'll see like a blank. Um, but that looks really great on there. I love that finish. Um, so sometimes you can tell if you've skipped sketches, but you just I just like to tie it off for some extra reinforcement along there. This machine actually has um, a double looper, so you can, if you want, have this sort of looper look on both the inside and the outside. You can see there's another spool up here to do that. And that's what this extra part here is. But it is one more thing for me to pay attention and so when I'm doing the live show, I often choose not to do the double because it's too much for me to talk and demonstrate and make sure both those loopers are playing nice. So you're not get, getting the double looper today. You're just getting the single looper. But if you do it reverse like this, then you kind of get that faux double looper look. And then we'll tie off these inside threads and I will show you what these pants look like. So lined mesh pants, super easy to sew. And I'll show you the modeled pictures late, later. What setting would you use for cover stitch on a regular machine? So you're not really going to get a cover stitch on a regular machine, but sometimes your machines might have more of a decorative stitch, which would give you like a honeycomb, stitch or something like that, which would give you more of the cover stitch look. You just have to make sure I try it on a sample piece that it still allows the fabric to stretch. Okay. So that would be the one thing that you would want to um, check out. All right. So it's hard to get the whole pants in the picture, but you can see they look super nice comfy, sort of straight leg, not really tapered. And we do have the side seam pocket, which is fun addition. So I'm hoping these fit my super tall <laughs> son and um, we'll show you the modeled photos of these later. Um, but they are easy to put together. This took me a little bit longer than normal because I had to um, add those pockets in after I forgot, but the rest of it, is a fun and easy sewing pattern. Again, the full tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description of this video and you can download the pattern pieces to sew this for yourself in sizes two to 12 years. And um, the pattern pieces have been updated 
as of today from a version that I shared years ago. So if you have the old version, you might wanna download the new one. It's just a little bit better um, in several areas and um, also has one more size. 12. So there you go. Enjoy. I hope you'll join me next week when I'll be sewing another fun project Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Sounds good. See you guys later.